Hi, my name is Jo and this video on how to scout your crop is part of the series on making decisions and implementing IPM in your strawberries. This video follows on from the one on pest and beneficial identification and if you haven't already seen this I would suggest watching that in conjunction with this video. Setting up a well designed scouting program is important as it gives you the best information in terms of pest and beneficial levels throughout your whole block. This then provides the baseline information on which you make decisions on how to control those pests. These methods can be applied to any growing system you are using, whether it be in ground or tabletop or in tunnels. If you're going to be making decisions based on the block, then you will need to sample each block. If you have a large area, for instance, in a traditional in-ground system, the only difference is that you will need to add more sample points to cover the larger area. General rule of thumb is to sample 20 to 30 points per hectare of your crop. There are a few different designs you can use, but our preferred basic design is to scout in a W or M pattern. Sample points are not located on the edge rows or within 4 to 5 metres of the row end in order to avoid edge effects. This design gives a minimum of 10 sampling points and good coverage of the block. Scouting different points over the whole block is really important as insects can occur in patches. For example, pests can occur just in one corner or on two outer rows due to drift from a nearby source with prevailing winds, while the rest of the block may not be affected. In cases like this, understanding where the pests are means you could potentially just treat the hot spots rather than have to treat the whole block. Other designs that can be used include that used by AgriChain Scouts, where you choose three rows in a block, one on either side and one in the centre. You then scout three points on each row, one near either end and a third one in the centre. This design gives you nine sample points across the width of the block. When you're selecting your scouting points, make sure that you don't scout in the same bay or area as you scouted the week before. Bioforce also uses the W pattern to give good coverage in field crops. In greenhouse setups they are a bit more structured and make sure that each row has been scouted at least once a month and the same row isn't scouted two times in a row. They may also mark particular spots where there is a pest outbreak to revisit the following week to check whether the pests have disappeared, for instance to see if your treatment was working. Scouting is carried out at least every two weeks. We usually switch to weekly scouting once pest levels start to increase as their numbers can rise very quickly, especially when it's hot. Bioforce will use two weekly scouting in field crops, but they will use one week scouting in greenhouses and tunnels. Whatever design you use, the two most important things to remember, regardless of which growing system you have, are to keep your method the same throughout the season and to scout points across the whole block. At each sample point it is a good idea to sample a minimum of five randomly picked leaves and five suitable flowers from within a one to two meter area as pest levels can vary a lot between individual flowers or leaves. When I say suitable flowers what I mean by that is flowers that are fully open and have yellow or tan pollen structures. This is because thrips in particular are usually in the flowers to feed on pollen and they generally won't be there if the flower isn't shedding that pollen. If you include old flowers pre-petal drop in your scout, this can give you an artificially low count of your pest levels. We generally don't scout green fruit unless we are looking for specific insects as the pests and beneficials will be in the flowers and leaves anyway. However, some people do prefer to look under the calyx of green fruit when looking for cucumis mites or thrips rather than just looking on flowers or leaves. Sometimes when you're looking at flowers you will need to push the petals back as the insects are often right at the base. When looking for insects on the leaves it doesn't matter if you just look at a single leaflet or a whole leaf although a whole leaf will give you a larger search area. You can scan the top surface of the leaf, but the insects are nearly always found on the underside, so it is essential to have a good look at the underside of the leaf. Because the insects that you are looking at are usually all very small, it is a good idea to use something with 10 times magnification so that you can see them clearly. I prefer to use a 10 times headset, as this keeps your hands free for handling the samples. 
but a simple 10 times lens will work just as well for seeing the insects. You may however have to close one eye to be able to focus properly. When it comes to the data you collect, making sure you record your data from each sample point is important, as this is what your decision making will be based on. For example, whether you decide to treat the whole block or just one area. I use data sheets with pre-labeled columns that I can change if necessary and record counts from each individual flower and leaf. This allows me to see variation in the pest numbers across the block clearly. AgriChange scouts record their data on an iPad which can then be uploaded directly to a computer. The data can also be simplified by combining all the leaves and flowers from one sample point into one count per point. You can also simplify data even further to simply note how many samples had each pest, as Bioforce does. For further information on pests and beneficials, you can refer to the IPM manual, strawberries, or go to Strawberry Growers NZ.